Environmental activist Wendell Berry once said, whatever we do to the air, water, food, and planet, we do to ourselves. With an increased frequency of respiratory illnesses, one must question the quality of air we're breathing. For example, the prevalence of asthma in the United States has increased by more than 75% since 1980. Children and certain racial groups, especially African Americans, have experienced relatively greater increases in asthma prevalence. While people such as Al Gore are pushing the global warming agenda, along with a carbon tax on all corporations, what many people fail to realize is that they are each their own corporation, which is why your name is listed in capital letters on your birth certificate and why your social security number in the United States is traded daily on the New York Stock Exchange. What we, the people, view as corporations, such as Exxon or J.P. Morgan, will most likely be tax-exempt from these carbon taxes. So, guess who will end up paying for them? You and me. As numerous studies have proven, Global climate change is cyclical, regardless of whether there were cars in operation since the early 1900s or beforehand. Yes, our planet has periodic climate changes and goes in cycles, but how much of this is being controlled or is responsible by man? In a study that looked into the long-term exposure to fine particulate matter, it was determined that air pollution exposure may be linked to premature brain aging and higher risks for certain brain strokes. The UCLA Institute of the Environment and Sustainability stated environmental exposures can cause infants to be born premature with low weight or to be born with certain birth defects. These babies are far more likely to die in infancy and those who survive have high risks of brain, respiratory, and digestive problems in early life. Additionally, the long-term effects include the risk for heart disease and diabetes in adulthood. Jonathan Benson reported how the Obama administration dramatically increased the allowable levels of radiation in drinking water. As radioactive pollution continues to accumulate throughout the environment as a result of nuclear incidents like Fukushima, the U.S. government's response is not to try to mitigate this threat to public health, but rather to increase the official maximum exposure levels and basically redefine how much radiation is considered safe. According to a press release from PEER, Peer, the White House's decision to allow the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, to alter its official radiation guides, known as Protective Action Guides, PAGs, make radiation cleanup mandates more lax than they have ever been in the history of the agency's existence. In soil, the PAGs allowed long-term public exposure to radiation in amounts as high as 2,000 millirems, explains the press release. This would, in effect, increase a long-standing 1 in 10,000 person cancer rate to a rate of 1 in 23 persons exposed over a 30-year period. So far, we've only covered common air pollution problems, but what about chemtrails? Here, I'm just asking you one thing. Look up and watch what they're doing to you. You're a cockroach that they're spraying just like it's humanicide. If you think I'm crazy, just look down the rabbit hole, turn off your TV set, you just actually do some research. Well, they say the government is 
dumping chemicals on us to control or manipulate the weather. And they say the unusual looking jet trails in the sky are actually chemical laden chemtrails. It's a belief gaining popularity here in Colorado. So is there really poison in the sky? They say when you see those jet contrails in the sky that don't disappear, that's proof that the government is using planes to spray chemicals into the atmosphere to manipulate or control the weather. Turning normal jet contrails into chemical trails or chemtrails. Because they're using government planes that are unmarked. And while some call the concept crazy. So when they say, no, there's nothing going on, I don't believe that. Rosalind Peterson says it's anything but. I think that this is terribly serious in the United States. The former USDA crop inspector, who was invited to speak at the UN conference on climate change in 2007, has been tracking the government's research on weather modification and something called geoengineering. A way of fighting global warming by putting chemicals like aluminum and barium into the atmosphere to create clouds which reflect the sun's rays. Geoengineering um, is to make a change which is unnatural. She says the suspicious looking sky shows the government is already experimenting with the weather. And that's why health department records show a sharp increase in barium and aluminum in California's water supply. Why would we be finding barium and aluminum and other chemicals in our drinking water and have man-made clouds persisting for 20 hours or more? If you are at least 40 years old or so, then you won't recall seeing chemtrails in the skies until the late 1980s or early 1990s. It was common to see the contrail of an airplane, which is the white cloud of emissions that evaporate quickly, but never the long-lasting chemtrails that we see in today's skies. One of the foremost luminaries on the topic of chemtrails is Dane Wigington, who has noted some bizarre anomalies in regard to chemtrails. Are so utterly profound that if we stay on this course, we face short term extinction, not just the human race, but life on Earth. That's how profound our situation is. And we've been told that these are condensation trails. But in fact, that is a lie of immense proportion. In regard to what's a condensation trail and what is not, all commercial aircraft and all military tankers have a high-bypass turbofan jet engine. 85% of the air that passes through this engine is non-combusted. This engine is by design nearly incapable of making a condensation trail except under the most extreme circumstances. So why are we seeing what we see in our sky? Because this is not condensation. If you walk down the street on a cold day, somewhere where it's cold, certainly not very cold here, but if you walk down the street on a cold day and your breath condenses, do you turn around after you walk a mile and see a cloud hanging behind you? This is not condensation. Aluminum poisoning, contamination, and toxicity have been linked to dementia, but when combined in conjunction with vaccines or trace minerals of fluoride, it can be even more dangerous. In an interview with investigative reporter Vinnie Eastwood, Wigington stated that many people are experiencing flu-like symptoms of sneezing, wheezing, itchy eyes, phlegm, and coughing that is attributed to chemtrails. Wigington stated, It cannot not be connected. It must be connected. There is a mountain of metal raining down on us, period. It wasn't here before. In the last 10 years, we've seen rain test samples escalate from 7 parts per billion to 3,450 parts per billion in Mount Shasta, California. That's nearly a 50,000% increase in aluminum in the rain." End of quote. The nanoparticulates in chemtrails are the most destructive part of them. According to Wigington, the smaller the particle, the more destructive they are to the respiratory system. According to statistics from 2005 through 2010, respiratory mortality in the United States went from 8th in mortality to 3rd. Wigington has also inferred that other illnesses such as sinusitis, ADD, and Alzheimer's are attributed to chemtrails. 
It's not your imagination. We're actually metering UV radiation. We're told by all major agencies that no more than 95%, or rather 95% of all incoming UV should be UVA. Only 5%, no more, should be UVB. We're seeing 60% UVB. That means we're getting something like 1,000% more UVB than we're being told. It's burning the bark off of trees. It's killing plankton. Plankton is 50% of Earth's oxygen supply. 50 to 60% of Earth's plankton's populations are now dead. Ecosystems are crashing around the globe. 90% of global pelagic fish populations are dead. Yes, Fukushima is a problem. All, many of you have probably seen the fish die offs, the seals dying, and so forth. There's a lot of issues in the ocean. So as the oceans warm, they release methane, frozen methane on the seafloor. Methane releases from the seafloor, aerates the water like a bottle of champagne, ships sink, they have no buoyancy. So this has been happening for a long time, but now it's happening on such a scale that when large releases happen, it deoxygenates the water, creates hypoxic and anoxic zones. So that's the likely primary cause of the fish die-offs everywhere, and as that methane release, it feeds us a positive feedback loop. Methane goes into the atmosphere. That changes ocean currents. We have warm water pumping straight into the Arctic now helping to release methane. There's enough methane in the Arctic to cause a Permian-style mass extinction a hundred times over. Nothing like this has ever happened before at this speed on planet Earth. Wigington went on to say that we know that the government knew the harmful effects of geoengineering. It's common knowledge at this point, and they continue to spray anyway. At minimum, one can only conclude that this massive health implication for life on Earth is either an accepted consequence or worse yet, a desired objective. We know that it's not just these metals, aluminum, barium, and strontium, that we have identified, but there's a toxic synergism between these metals and other metals that we are exposed to, like mercury, in the vaccines. We were given studies that indicated that if you combined aluminum with mercury under the right conditions, toxicity can increase up to 10,000%. When they are combined, they become much more harmful." End of quote. This brings us full circle to fluoride, which is illegal to put in the water in many European countries, but recently it's been reported that in the last 60 water tests from Norway and Germany, fluoride is now showing up in the results and is not the result from any industrial process or processing. It is interesting to note that water fluoridation is not allowed in either of these countries. Virgin Trains edited in chemtrails in a clip from the 1970 movie The Railway Children as a way to make chemtrails seem like an everyday occurrence even though they were not visually prominent until the late 1980s. For anyone born from 1990 onwards, chemtrails are something they've seen almost every day of their lives, but I can assure you that this is not the norm. Unfortunately, chemtrails have been added into commercials, magazine advertising, and television shows as a way to normalize something that is not normal. You can find out more about chemtrails by visiting Dane Wigington's website, or you may consider researching weather modification programs such as Project Cumulus, Operation Popeye, Project Cloverleaf, and Project Shad. For example, in 2000, a high-level executive at an American airline revealed his office was visited by two men from an unnamed government agency. And quote, they told us that the government was going to pay our airline, along with others, to release special chemicals from commercial aircraft. 
when asked what the chemicals were and why we were going to spray them, they told us that information was given on a need-to-know basis and we weren't cleared for it. We were made to sign non-disclosure forms that basically stated that we would go to prison if we told anyone what we knew. So what is the objective for poisoning our air supply? The main objective is the literal slow kill of humanity through a weakened immune system. Secondly, diseases can be spread through nanoparticulates which enter our bloodstream upon breathing them in. In particular, Morgellons disease has risen drastically since the inception of chemtrails and was an unknown disease beforehand. This is certainly not a coincidence. A weakened immune system plays into the need for Big Pharma to come up with new vaccinations and medications to alleviate something that was contrived to cull humanity right from the start. It all boils down to greed, money, and eugenics. So if everyone is being sprayed, then doesn't that include those who ordered the spraying to occur? Yes, but through costly blood transfusions, those in power believe they can eliminate these toxins on a regular basis while, for the rest of us, they accumulate within our bodies. In an article on forced vaccinations, Dr. Hildegard Staniger points out, Amendments to the Chemical and Biological Warfare Act of 1949, in December of 2007, state that under terrorist and riot control measures, mass aerial immunizations may occur. So what does that mean to us? Forced vaccinations without our consent. Similar to the fluoridation of our water supplies, forcibly medicating the population through chemtrails without a vote or our consent to do so is a crime against humanity. What can we do? Plant trees. Trees absorb CO2, removing and storing the carbon while releasing oxygen back into the air. In one year, an acre of mature trees absorbs the amount of CO2 produced when you drive your car 26,000 miles. Trees absorb odors and pollutant gases, including nitrogen oxides, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, and ozone, and filter particulates out of the air by trapping them on their leaves and bark. In one year, an acre of mature trees can provide enough oxygen for 18 people. Grow flowers and plants. Plants and flowers, such as the peace lily and aloe, are wonderful air purifiers, while the spider plant can help reduce carbon monoxide Carpool for obvious reasons that less cars on the road means less air pollution. Choose cleaner forms of transportation. You may consider a hybrid or electric car. If you're an inventor, perhaps you can replicate Stanley Meyer's water-powered car and open source the idea to reach as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. Regular chemtrail detoxing. As reported by Christina Sarich on Natural News, there are several things you can do to reduce the inflammatory response that is caused by some of these chemicals, according to neurosurgeon Dr. Russell Blaylock. Tocopherols and vitamin E will help reduce inflammation in your brain and body, thus reducing the toxic effect of chemtrails. Almond milk is a great source of naturally occurring vitamin E, as is vitamin C, when added to vitamin E, is a powerful protector of the brain, according to Dr. Blaylock. Curcumin binds with aluminum and helps to reduce its toxic effects and supports its elimination from the body. Saffron is another great way to support brain health and to detox these chemicals. In some studies, saffron has also shown to promote learning, memory and recall due to a compound in the plant called crocin. Flaxseed has been shown to help reduce radiation poisoning and boost brain power as well. Cinnamon is full of antioxidants 
and can reduce the inflammatory response in the body. Activism, petitions, and creating awareness. By remaining silent, we are basically acquiescing our approval of having our air, water, and food supplies contaminated and poisoned. I highly recommend that you sign or create petitions against chemtrails and geoengineering. Call your congressman or congresswoman or senator. Share videos and articles on social networking websites. Talk to others whenever the opportunity arises. Download and share free flyers from Dane Wigington's geoengineering website. Stay tuned to N5D.com and BodyMindSoulSpirit.com for part three, the poisoning of our food supplies.